today we are going to be braiding hair. Or, as you guys can see, braiding straight to know how to braid hair. And so, why are we braiding hair? Because for girls, most of the time you guys have hair that you can do in different styles with hair braiding. And then boys, if or when you have a girlfriend or a wife, you can do their hair as a really nice gesture to them and give them a little gift. <laughs> but also, boys with long hair, you can also braid the hair. <laughs> and so, we're going to demonstrate for you guys how to braid hair. First, on Sydney. So, Will's going to braid my hair, and we just want you guys to watch. Okay, and Sadie's going to explain it step by step. Alright. So, you can follow along on your step by step instructions, <laughs> but the big picture is that you want the outside pieces to always go to the middle. So, you're going to start with three separate strands of hair that you want to keep very neatly and you want to start with one outside piece going to the middle and then the opposite outside piece to go to the middle and then you repeat you want to turn <laughs> okay so the outside piece is always going to the middle piece this outside piece, go in, go in. So you should always have two strands in one hand and one strand in the other. In the strand with one hand, grab the outside piece of the strand with the hand with two strands. Right. So that was your demonstration, but next you're going to come grab some string and take them in front of you, and we're going to do that again, and you can follow with your string. So, does everyone want to come grab one? Grab the tape as well. Yeah, you want the tape. <laughs> Get out of your seats, come on. <laughs> grab one. Yeah, I got a face. Oh, yeah, hand them down. That's, that works a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> again and this time you're going to follow with your own string. So, so again, take your three pieces and have two in one hand and one in the other and cross the outside piece to the middle. So the hand with two, you're going to cross the outside to the middle. And then repeat. It is tricky, but we're going to have a lot of practice. By the end of this, it'll be easy. Good. Nice. Now the orange. Good. Anna, wow. <laughs> okay. Are you confused? No, I just had to restart. Okay. It was all twisted. Okay. Okay, and make sure you pull it tight so it's not so loose. You can... So it could be helpful if you hold them both in your hands, but you, you do a little. Yeah, so hold two in one hand. Robert, so like pick this one up in your hand, and then keep that one in this hand, and then if you can move this one to the middle, and then the black one to the middle. Oh, sure. There you go. So she never thought bad, not bad. Oh, it's slipping. You 
want it to be taut. I want it to be taut. So, you I agree. It looks like it's a lot harder to do Fifteen minutes, right? Yes. Six. Oh, six minutes. Oh, six minutes. Oh, oh, six minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.
advice and opinion on overbraiding and underbraiding? Oh, overbraiding? I described this to Gavin. That's actually a great question because I realize some of you guys have it. So on Sid's head, when it was in the back of the hair, I braided it under. So the strand on the outside would go under the hand and under, under again. Because if you braid over in the back of the head, it's going to look a bit messy with the way hair falls on the head. But if you're braiding in the front few strands of hair, then you're going to want to braid over because it will, it just works with the dynamics of your hair, I guess. Yeah, so when it's specifically hair, the over-under is a little bit more important just based off of how you want your hair to look. Um, but with the bracelets, whatever is more comfortable for you, I think, just choose that route. Um, personally, I like the over, especially on the bracelets or in the hair, just it's a lot simpler for me. So. What did you guys think the hardest part was? All of the braiding. Oh. <laughs> All of the braiding. <laughs> okay. Anna? I think like keeping it consistent, because yeah. sometimes it would be looser and sometimes it would be tighter, so yeah. like trying to keep it all the same. Okay, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And that comes with practice too. The more you practice it, like I saw Kahi, his was a bit more loose, but it's okay because over time, it's not that he has bad fine motor skills, <laughs> it's the fact that he hasn't practiced enough and over time and as you repeat this skill more and more, you'll fine tune it and that'll become natural to you. So just to wrap up, again circling back to the beginning, braiding hair can be a great skill to have for anybody in your life that has long hair, even if you want to grow your own hair out and braid it on yourself, um, or in case you want to make bracelets, or in general, it's just a fun skill to have. So we're going to finish with practicing completely on your own now with no practice for another minute. So keep going. Do this completely on your own. If you want to restart your full braid, that would be, a, try to, you know, take this minute to do it as perfectly as you can, so no loose spots or tight spots unevenly. And you can make it a bracelet then. No, I'm okay. I, I, I might. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody want a new one? We have extras. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So now that you did it on your own, are there any more questions or challenges that you found? Um, I guess keeping it consistent, like tautness throughout mm -hmm. the bracelet, mm -hmm. tightness, I don't know. Good Tight. 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 That's the right word. Yeah. That's a good word. <laughs> I think um, what we helpful about is instead of starting super low at the end of the string, start at the knot and then make your way down while moving with the string. So you're not like just crossing them at the end, you're going from the top down. Awesome. So for the end of our presentation, we are going to just talk about the command style, which was the way that you all learned how to braid in. All right. So the command style is known as precision performance. It's really good application for students who either lack motivation, are new to something, or they are disor it's a disorganized group. It's oftentimes used in elementary schools, but it can also be seen in synchronized swimming, orchestras, um, and a lot more group sports where it's very synchronized, if that makes sense. So the command style is um, a style of learning that's more milita militaristic and the teacher gives all the questions to the students and the students respond. There's very little autonomy within the classroom setting for the students themselves because it's a way to monitor and control a group of students or participants uh, in a way that can enhance their learning skills if they lack motivation or drive. Yeah. So the biggest aspect of the command style that is emphasized is the relationship between the teacher and the student. So also if you want to flip your things over on the back, that's kind of what we're going off of. Um, so in the command style, the teacher makes the maximum amount of decisions and fully runs the class, fully has structure, and the students make the minimum amount of decisions. So I would say that our presentation was a little less commanding than maybe some other examples could be, but you still saw that we had the structure, we told you what to do, we told you the movements to do, we showed you what to do, and it wasn't really up to you guys to decide what you wanted to do and when you wanted to do it. Yeah, so the command style has three main stages, and the stage one is the pre-impact stage, and that's all of the behind-the-scenes planning, um, anything you don't really see, so us cutting up the string and organizing it the way we did, um, creating the lesson plans, things like that. And the second one is the impact stage, and that's the um, where we describe the initial roles, so basically as us three being the teachers, and you all being the students and learning, um, as well as the subject expectations. So our expectations for you guys were to learn how to break. Um, and then finally is like the logisticals and the procedures. So again, teaching you guys when to move which strand and the application for braiding in real life. And the final stage is the post-impact stage. So this is kind of where we just ended with providing feedback, um, asking for questions, and just debriefing kind of on how the session went, and what you learned, and what you still had challenges with. So finally, we're going to discuss the objectives of the command style. The objectives of the command style is essentially to have a high energy, high participation environment that's also well structured and organized with the students participating in synchronized movements. So you saw that in where you guys were given time to practice with guidance and then you were, the timer went up and then you were given time to practice on your own. You're all doing this together, you're engaging with each other, you're able to ask questions during guided practice and then solidify your skills during independent practice. And there, the repetition, you want to practice and practice the material in a group setting and then be able to also solidify your skills and hopefully leave with these skills mastered. So on the bottom of the page is kind of, I know it's really small, but that just shows you kind of how to structure a class in a command style. So. You can look at that on your own and it's kind of something to refer back to if you ever wanted to plan a session in the command style. It shows kind of what to focus on in each um, 
category of the class. So, um, any questions about command style or grading? Judy, you're good.